Good morning, and welcome to our very first broadcast for a new year. We thank God for bringing us through 2020 and allowing us to be able to see the beginning of a new year. As the psalmist says, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We'd like to welcome you to this, our broadcast, First Church of Christ Holiness, 789 Edgemont Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana, where the mission of our church is to preach, proclaim, spread, encourage, and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ in all parts of the world. On behalf of our senior bishop, Bishop Del Cajo, and our associate minister, Minister Demarquius Harvey, we will welcome you to this, our first broadcast of a new year. I trust God has been good to all of you and that you are looking forward to another year of anticipation of what God is going to do in your life. For our scripture reading this morning, I would like to read from the 48th Division of Psalms. The word of the Lord says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings were assembled, they passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and haste away. Fear took hold upon them, there and plain, pain, as a woman in travail. We ask that the Lord would bless these first six verses of this passage of Scripture, and we ask it for the edification of the hearts of his people. Lord, as we come now to the very first Sunday of a new year, we thank you for you have been good to us. You brought us through a turbulent 2020, and we are at the beginning of a new year. And we pray that your grace and mercy will continue to sustain your people. But most of all, Lord, we pray that individuals who don't know you will become saved. We ask now that thou would use this broadcast to speak to someone, someone that needs to hear from you today, someone that needs to make a profession of faith, someone that is hurting, that they might find the strength to realize that Jesus is what they need in their life. God, we ask you to bless us today. We ask you to look upon Bishop Kajo, Minister Harvey, and this entire congregation, that everything that we do, everything that we say, that it will glorify you, O oh God. We ask now for your grace and mercy and for your anointing on this service as we begin this a new year. We look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, and we say thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' blessed name. If you would like to support our ministry, there are a couple of ways that you can do so. And I would like to share those with you. You may write a check or a money order payable to First Church of Christ Holiness. That would be F-C-C-O-U. I'm sorry, F-C-C-O-C-H-U-S-A. And mail it to 789 Edgemont Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana. If you would like to set us up as a direct payee through your financial institution, you may do so by contacting us here at the church, and we'll be happy to share the information that you will need to set us up. Our church phone number is 317-924-0534. And finally, if you are a PayPal user, you may send your PayPal payment to us at paypal.me backslash F-C-O-C-H-U-S-A-I-N-D-Y. We look forward to receiving your contributions to our ministry, but most of all, we look forward to hearing that you have made a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. Now we will get to the spoken word, and we just ask that the blessing of the Lord will rest on each and every one of you. And again, welcome to our very first broadcast for a new year. Amen.
Good morning, good morning. Merry uh, New Year to everybody that's out there watching. I'm thankful that we have finally come to 2021. If you listen to this, that means you are blessed. That means that you finally were able to get out of 2020 and step into 2021. I hope you all had a Merry New Year, a Merry Christmas, and I'm just, I'm just hopeful that we all learn from what we've learned uh, from the economy and, and, and the, the government and just uh, the CDC and everything. I, I, I pray and hope that even though we had some bad news in the past year, that we still believe that God is in control. I hope we know that. I hope we, 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 we stick to that and, and have confidence that, that God is still in control. We had a rough time last year, didn't we? That's why I told uh, my wife, I said, hey, I, I need that He's Able shirt because I want to remind the viewers out there that he is absolutely able and willing to help his people out. That's right. I said his people. We are uh, children that have promises outlined in the Word of God that we can cling to when times get tough. And so I'm just thankful to be here. I know you are, and if you can, just lift up your hands and say he's able. Because he is absolutely able. He not only brought you through 2020, but now you are standing here, uh, being here, wherever you are in your kitchen, living room, uh, in your car, but you're here in 2021. Today is our first message. We are here in January, uh, and it's amazing, isn't it? We finally got here. It felt like 2020 would never end. But yet and still, we are here and we are standing, whether we are sick, whether we are healthy, whether we are in the right frame of mind or not, whatever our current situation is, you have made it to 2021. That means God has a purpose for you. That means that he has something that you need to do, whether it's going to be in the next couple of days or whether it's today or in the next, uh, or next month or the coming months ahead. Um, God has a purpose for you. And that's what we're going to outline today in today's message. I'm so excited. It's our first message, and it's going to be refocus and recommit. That's right. It's, it's, it's all about uh, starting this year off, refocusing and recommitting to what we know is true. And, yes, that we know that God is in control. If we follow him and we outline our lives according to what the Word of God says, then we can refocus and believe no matter what 2020 or 2021 holds that we're going to be in good hands, that we got this, and most importantly, that he's able. God, I, I, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to speak to your people. I thank you, Lord, that you have, have brought us here, God, and, and, and we are, are listening and streaming and studying your word today, this, this Sunday morning, I, I pray that this lesson will move the, the, the hearts and minds of your believers. I pray that it will strengthen and encourage those that are watching and, and listening, God. I pray that this message will move the, the hardened hearts and, and soften the, the hardened souls, God. I, I pray that, that the wisdom that you give from Proverbs, the 16th chapter, will soar through the bodies and minds of everybody that's listening. These things I ask in your mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And welcome to First Church Christ Holiness, first sermon of 2021. It's amazing to be here uh, with you this morning. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to get right into the lesson. I believe in getting straight to the point. Um, I'm not going to dance around a little bit. I I want you to get your your Bibles and turn to Proverbs, the 16th chapter. And we're going to stay in in the the realm of 1 to 8. That's where we're going to camp up at. And it says this. I'm going to read. I got two versions here for you. I got the NIV version and I got the Message Bible. And I'm going to break it down in in ways that we can really understand it so we have something to chew on a little bit later. So verse 1. Uh, chapter 16, it says, mortals make elaborate plans. This is out, out of the Message Bible. Mortals make elaborate plans, but God has the last word. Humans are satisfied with whatever looks good. God probes for what is good. Put God in charge of your work, then what you've planned will take place. God made everything with a place and purpose. 
Even the wicked are included, but for judgment. God can't stomach arrogance. Believe me, he'll put those up, uh, upsta- upstarts in their place. Guilt is banished through love and truth. The fear of God deflects evil. When God approves of your life, even your enemies will end up shaking your hand. Far better to be right and poor than to be wrong and rich. This is a lesson that, that I had to learn as a young guy uh, starting off in the ministry is that it's not all about what it looks. It's not all about how it looks. It's about what it actually is. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a relationship, not a religion. When we come to know God, we have to understand that it's, we, we can't get caught up in how we look to other people. We can't get caught up in how we look to the church. And so for 2021, I want us to understand and, and start off this year correct and get our relationships together with Christ. Focusing solely on the relationship and not on what we look like. Not, get, not being concerned with what others think about us. I felt like that was my uh, thing back in when I started the ministry and started being a Christian. Um, for those of you that know me, you knew I, I grew up in church, and so I, I, I did the, the, the music thing. I was able to be the president of the usher board, the president of the choir, vice president of the, of the choir, vice president of the usher board. I did a lot in church, and I loved the way people would look at me and shake my hand and congratulate me and say, hey, you're, you're just this great person. It made me feel good. But inside, I was hollow when it came to my relationship with Christ. I would sing in the choir, and it would be good, and people would praise God, and, and they would shout and scream, and then we'll come down as a choir, and we will feel good knowing that people were shouting and crying and, and giving God all the glory. While that was all good, but inside I was still hollow. And so in 2021, I want us to not be so hollow. I want us to have some thickness to our relationship with Christ. I want us to have some thickness that, that we understand that when things come our way, he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we can ever ask or think. That means God can do more than what you can think he's able to do. You look at a situation and you may feel as though it's an impossible one. You may look at your finances and feel it's an impossible one. But guess what? He's able. He's able, and we have to trust that we know that he's able. We have to trust in God. For 2021, uh, the, I think the, the whole plan for the New Year is what? You said it, New Year's resolution. We resolve to be better. We resolve to be more in shape. We resolve to treat our spouse better. We, we resolve to treat our children better. We resolve to do harder uh, task at work or take up more athletic events or take up a hobby, take up something new. We resolve to do this time, time again, year after year, in about, let's say, March-ish, some people sooner, all that stuff goes out the window. You know, there's this quote that says, if you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. And so I'm, I'm telling you that the reason uh, I believe that Corona was so important uh, to our Christian faith is it, be, it, it, it lets us realize that our lifestyle can be different. We don't have to do the same thing we've done over and over again. God showed me that our lifestyle as a Christian doesn't have to line up with what we used to do as a sinner. What do I... What, what does that mean? That means that, that we don't have to continue to struggle with drinking alcohol and, and getting drunk every weekend or, or going out and partying with the boys or the girls and still go to church and those two join together. We don't have to be that person. We can leave all that other stuff alone and refocus and com- commit to God and following Him. We don't have to have... The best of both worlds, because the Bible tells us in Revelations 
that God either wants us to be hot or cold. And if we join that stuff together, if we're living like we want to live and doing the things that we've done in the past and comparing or, or, or and compounding all together with being a Christian, then God will spew us out because he wants either or. You're either going to be all in for the world or you're going to be all in for Christ. But you can't do both. You can't. And so that's why it's so important to refocus on this new year and decide and challenge yourself to not just let this just be another New Year's resolution to be a better moral moral person. But let's establish our dominance in the Word of God. Let's establish our, our power in the Word of God. Because I feel as though a lot of us believe that God is up there, uh, but we are still struggling here, and we kind of don't know. There's kind of a disconnect somewhere, right? Is that what you're feeling? Uh, I know I felt that for the, for the longest, that God is all high and mighty, but there is some type of disconnect, whether it be that you don't feel him or you believe that it, it's more of a life of living a more, more moral life, but it's, it's It's not. It's about having a relationship with Christ that is going to produce fruit. Um, I'm going to read the NIV version to you. It says that to the man uh, belong his plans of the heart. We plan things. Everybody thinks that their way is the right way. But God's plan is is the right way. I'm going to jump down to verse 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do. The Lord works out everything for his own. His own. We are his own. We are God. Each of us, man, boy, woman, child, we are all under God's care. So what does that mean? That means the plans that you have Make sure that you commit that to God. How do you do that? How, how would you commit your plans to God? Well, uh, it, it's going to take action. It's not just a faith kind of thing. We got to get over that. We got to understand that it, we can't just rely completely on faith. Because faith without works is dead. Faith takes action. It's, it's, it's something that we have to do. Um, it's something that we have to believe that if we do something for Christ, he is going to hold up his end of the bargain. So how do we commit our work and our plans to Christ? Sit down. Talk with him about it. When me and my wife decided that we we're uh, going to uh, buy certain foods to make us healthier. We just didn't go to the grocery store that day and say, hey, let's, let's just pick out some things, walking through the aisle like, uh, this looks good, this, this looks good. No, we, me and my wife, Asherette, we sat down and we came up with a list of things that would make us better, healthier, more satisfied. And then I looked at her list and she looked at my list and we began to do surgery on this list until we compiled one list that was affordable, healthy, and that worked. You have to do the same thing with God. I I don't know what your method is, whether you need to sit down and write out what your plans are and then pray over it, but there, there has to be time that you set apart. You should have that anyway. Time that you set apart for the Lord and say, God, Dad, look, this is what I want to do. I may not be clear on what your purpose is for me in my life right now. Maybe you are. But as for those that, speaking to those that don't really know their purpose or anything like that, God, I really don't know my purpose that you have for me at this present moment, but I do know that I want you to be included in my lifestyle. I don't want you just to be somebody that I come to anytime something's rough 
or hard or, or difficult or I'm not understanding or my wife is getting on my nerves or my husband's getting on my nerves or my boyfriend or girlfriend or my job or my boss. I don't just want to come to you as a life jacket because that's not what God is. He's more than a life jacket. He's a life source. And so I, whatever that method is, you must sit down with God and pray fast on it and say, God, this is what I want to do for this year. Just that, just that alone, having that desire to, to make God a part of your life. Well, the Bible says that he will give you the desires of your heart. He'll give you what you should want. He'll give you your purpose. And in fact, you'd see that and you'd go after it. And what does it say in return? That you will be blessed by it. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will what? Succeed. You see, God is not just coming out and saying, hey, I know you said you believe in me. Boom, super Christian right there. You're not going to know everything at that moment. It's, it's not going to happen. It's a process. God is a big meal. And with all big meals, you got to take your time to eat it all. Never once would you ever go to a buffet and eat everything they have and clean them dry and then still be able to live later. It just won't happen. There's no way we can absorb all of God in one day. It's not going to happen. I mean, nobody's able to do that. <laughs> but the thing, what we have to understand is that God loves to be eaten slowly. You, you take him in and you constantly have that fluid and you, you're drinking on them by living your life every day for him, eventually you'll get so full that you just want more. He'll, he'll empty out. You'll, others will see you. Others will know that you are serving God, and then they will glorify God, which is in, in heaven. I mean, you'll get so full that people would see you and say, man, I just, I, that brother, that sister is, is, is God's. <laughs> That person loves God. But I will tell you, and if you watched my, uh, my New Year's uh, sermon that for on the December 31st, the watch night, if, if you watch that, you have to know that you are going to have trials. You're going to have situations that arise that you are not going to know how to handle. And you're not going to know why it's happening to you at this moment, this hour, this day. It came out of nowhere. You're going to have that. But do not be surprised. I'm saying that as a little hypocrite because when Corona came, I was surprised. I was like, Lord, what, what just happened here? You, you, mean, you mean I can't go to, to the movies no more, God? I can't. Just, I can't be outside like that anymore, God. I was surprised. But the Bible warns us against that. Don't be surprised by the fiery trials that will come against us. Don't be surprised. If this government decides to implode, we shouldn't be surprised. For this world, it's not our world. This is not ours. Ours is, is made. There, see, what happened was, is that when, when Christ came down here, he lived his life so that we can live through him when he's gone. But when he left, he's preparing a place for us. Because he, he knows that this, this mess is, is not where it is. Let's continue. Um, going from verse 4, it says, God made everything with a place and purpose. Even the wicked are included. But for judgment, God can't stomach arrogance or pretense. Believe me, he'll put those upstarts in their place. Uh, reading from the, the NIV version, it says, The Lord works out everything for his own ends, even the wicked for a day of disaster. See, God even uh, created evil. We think, why? Why would God do that? Why would you create evil? Why, God, why sin? Well, if you go back to Genesis, you'll see how all that started. This was not 
at all God's plan. Uh, this was before and above my pay grade as well. Satan decided that he was a little arrogant, and so he did his thing and rose up against God got the boot along with three-fourths of the angels. And then, unfortunately, Adam and Eve fell to the temptation of, of Satan. And that in itself opened the door for this evil that, that, that is rushing now throughout, the, throughout the, our community, throughout the, our, our nation, throughout the world. Verse 5 says, The Lord to test all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Man, listen. What I took from this was the the people that that claim to be Christian, uh, the ones that can spew out any verse at any point, and and yet judge like judge judy <laughs> when anybody that doesn't look the part comes in you see people that believe they are better than somebody else because they've had a a, a more spiritual childhood than somebody that hasn't that may just be from the community those people that think they are better have a special place in God's heart. That, it's a very wicked uh, feeling that God gets when he sees them. We must be reminded, family, that we cannot look at somebody and think that we are better than them. Because we are not. We are, we are all sinners saved by grace. That should not be an issue in the church of God. That, that should not be a thing where, where, where we have godly people looking at somebody and trying to change them based off of their subjection of what they look like. Y'all, we, we, are, we, are, we are Christians. That, that, that first part is, is, is Christ. And what did Christ do when he saw people that didn't look like him? You see, in verse, uh, verses uh, uh, 2 in the, in the Message Bible says that humans are satisfied with whatever looks good. But God is, is he's probing for what is good. See, Christ, when he saw people that were not like him, that did not have the same background, that didn't, that didn't look or talk or speak like him. He didn't shy away from them. He didn't tell his disciples, oh, oh, oh hold on, guys, those, those, are, those people, I don't know about them, they, they don't look right. You know, he didn't do that. In fact, he talked to them. He encouraged them. He gave them words that, that would strengthen them and things that, that, that he gave them they could take and, and they would go and, and tell others about what he said. This is our job. Since Christ has, has gone, he's busy preparing a place for us. And we, ha we have this Holy Spirit now uh, with us in, in present day. And, and that's our job to go and talk to people that we that don't look like us. That don't smell like us. That don't wear the same clothes as us. I am sick and tired of, 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 the, of the separation. God is too. We are here to protect each other. I used to get real excited about this when I played football. Uh, high school football is like the biggest thing in the world. Uh, when I even played college football, I remember back when I played high school football, and I loved it so much more because, man, we would get so amped 
up for these games. And then this Umber, Under Armour commercial used to come on with this big dude, swole with his Under Armour cut off with a headband, and, and he would look around, he would, he would say, protect this house. And I would get so motivated, it'd be, it'd be Monday, the game ain't until Friday or Saturday. That's just, I just started doing jumping jacks because I'm like, man, whoo, I, can't, I cannot wait to that game. I'm going to tear somebody up. That's the same enthusiasm we must have for the church. We must go out and make disciples. Don't keep what we have to ourselves. Not being so prideful. Thinking that we know it all, because we do not. And if we do, that's a special place for you in God's mind, in his eyesight. Y'all, this is, this is time. This is our time. We must protect this house. What does that mean? We must commit to following Christ's word. And focus on it. You see, this light is this light right here. You see it; it's bright. It's it's illuminating uh, whatever it's shining on. Correct. It's shining on me, but it's not hurting me. It's not. It's not focused on me. You see, this is what a lot of Christians are doing. They are out here, and they they are looking the part. They're not really doing wrong, it's not bad, uh, doing their job, but it's, it's not focused. You see, if I take a laser and I point it, that laser's not going to have, it's not going to light up much of anything, aside from what I'm pointing it at. We must be our God's missiles in this society, in this world that we live in, God did, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it once. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he gave us the spirit of of power and and, and love and a sound mind. We must focus on our job at hand. Recommit, refocus, restructure the way that, that, that you've been doing. Some would say, if it ain't broke, why fix it? But in Christianity, we must always be trying to move to that next level. Verse 6 through 8, it says, through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, a man avoids evil. And this is my last point. Uh, Better a little with righteousness then much gain with injustice. And I'm going to stop there. Um, and we'll pick up verse 9 and everything at, uh, another time. Verse 6 and 7 uh, are so important. Verse 6 says, through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, a man avoids evil. We are going to have temptation in this lifetime. I don't know what your temptation is, but whatever it is, it's going to come. We are going to have trials in this lifetime. I don't know what you struggle with, but it's going to come. The things that that pull us away from God will be there still after you can recommit yourself to God. Faithfulness in God and loving Christ will steer you away from those evil things. See, the more and more you, you, you go after God, the further and further away you get from the flesh. And in the end, the flesh is ultimately what always fails us. It's what always puts that bridge between that chasm between you and God, flesh is the, it's always going to try its best to wheel you away from God's purpose and his plan for your life. Why? Because we always think we know the best. Verse 7 says, when a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, look now, 
Man, I love this verse. When a man's plans are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live at peace with him. Are y'all tired of just being tired? People bad-mouthing you, people telling, uh, talking behind your back, and, 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 and you're just tired of hearing your name in people's mouths. Are, listen, God will even let your enemy be at peace with you. That's pretty powerful. That's, that's pretty powerful. And, and to close up, uh, verse 8, it, it, it says, it's better to, to have a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. It, there's so much injustice in the world, I think we can all agree <laughs> with a lot of injustice in this world. But it's better to have a little righteousness than be poor absolutely stinking rich and going to hell. It is so important that we we come to a position this year where we realize that it's time to recommit and refocus our efforts into becoming truly Father God, I thank you for this opportunity that, that, I, that you gave me to, to speak to your people. Father, I, I pray that this lesson went out and it touched those that listen to it. Father, those that do not know you. Father, I pray that, that they will, will come to you and realize that it is easier with you um, than it is, it is easier with the world, God. It, it, when we are when we are with Christ, things may be difficult, but but we have a purpose and and it and and there's value in it. But when when we're with the world, it may be seem easy, but we'll just be hollow and there there's not much uh, nutrition from being with the world. Father, I I pray that we 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 take those that don't know you, and we wrap them in your love, God, and not shame them, not blame them, not tell them that they are uh, the way they are because of how they came about, God. It is not about that. It is about serving you and serving your people, God. It's about your love, and I pray that we be able to show those that are out here, God, in this world, whether on the street or in mansions, God, I pray that we, we show them love, God, and your love, true love, Father, so that they will come and know that, that, that it is you that, that we stand for, Father, and, and they will give you glory and honor. I pray these things in your name, my friend. Amen. Listen, if you don't know Christ and you want to, uh, if you go back and Listen to the uh, the announcement. You can also call that number, and and we'll be able to even uh, tell you a little bit more about joining First Church or joining this this awesome club called Christianity. Um, we do stick together. It it, it it's something that uh, that I have had for a long time, but um, recently starting to really come into the the power and knowledge of knowing how amazing it is to follow God. So if you don't know him, trust me, the things that you are are going to experience in the future mean absolutely nothing if you don't have him by your side. Uh, the things, the successful things that you will come to uh, in the future, you will still, when you get there, feel hollow on the inside because you're going to feel like there's something missing in it. It is. It's, it's the love of Christ. Um, and those of you that do know Christ and haven't been with him and and, and do need to refocus and recommit. If that's you, uh, I, I, I applaud you because you, you recognize that the first step is recognizing. And after you recognize it, then what you can do is do something about it. So I, 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 will, I will tell you that it is just as easy as somebody that doesn't know Christ to get back with Christ. All you have to do is say, Lord, I messed up. into my life again. This is this is your world, Father. I'm just a 
vessel, use me. Use me up so that people can see me, and when they see me, they see you. So if that's you, just throw, uh, I, throw your name. If you're not comfortable with throwing your name in the comments, uh, just say pray for me. Um, if you're not comfortable with doing that, listen, the reason why I love God so much is that you can do things on your own. Uh, you can go in your room and say that prayer of just, uh, God, I need you. He'll know your heart. He knows it. If you're tired of looking the part and you want to actually be what, what we read about, then God is going to be excited. And guess what? The angels in heaven are going to have a party because you made that decision. So I, I, I thank you. Please tune in next week uh, as we uh, continue the lesson in Proverbs of, of recommitting and refocusing on just being uh, more a closer uh, Christian and, and, to, and a better, just a better uh, vessel to this world. Uh, I pray that you will, will seek him more. And if, if you can, just go ahead and read the rest of Proverbs. We stopped at verse 8, but just continue to read it, and we'll, get, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more next week. All right, guys, I love you.